So welcome back to Eternal Harvest Farm. And you might be thinking, wait, I thought it was Chestnut Oaks Homestead. It is a new name, new farm, and a whole new mission out here, which we'll be talking about more in a future video. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brian. And like I said, today we're going to be talking about four things we have learned in about a year and a half of raising and breeding American guinea hogs. So these four things, some of them may seem a little trivial and they may seem not these big epiphanies, but they really did have a lot of implications on our, our time and effort. So they're really big lessons that have really stuck with us and we want to share them with you guys today. So lesson number one is that mama doesn't need help. When I say that, I mean we've had two litters with our sow and she had one before she came to us. First litter, we thought we need to prepare everything, the hay in the hut, a little fenced in area to keep her safe and secure and she didn't care. She went down the hill and had her piglets up against the log and a little nest she created all by herself, no help from us. Luckily we got to catch it kind of halfway through and uh, you see some footage of that here. But she didn't need us because American guinea hogs and a lot of these other heritage breeds, they have a lot of their instincts still in them, their innate abilities to take care of themselves. And so we put a lot of effort in, which was still fun and we were excited. And it turns out she really took care of herself in having piglets. The second litter we had, um, we actually didn't even know she was pregnant because we had a breakaway from our boar, which will be another lesson here coming up. And she ended up just having the pigs by a tree. We were going up to check on the boar. I looked over and there was some piglets. And so we had to <laughs> miss Bible study that night because we had to take care of the piglets. It was right before we were ready to start. But they really do a good job on their own. Lesson number two is the boar. Adult boars are significantly harder to keep confined than we ever thought. So our boar Han has gotten out of the Premier One electric fences on a solar charger. Um, he's gotten out of regular two strand um, fencing on a plugged in AC charger. And he's gotten out of hog panels um, attached to T-posts. He's lifted up out of those. He's a really opportunist and he will find a way out when he wants to get out. And kind of a side lesson from that is that we did learn when our sow goes in heat because the boar gets just, let's just call it excited. And when he gets excited, he wants out. And there's very little that can stop him because he is big and he is strong. Well, finally, the only way we have successfully stopped him and he even still bust down the gate but luckily he didn't get out was by putting four by four posts every four feet with hog panel stapled into those on the inside so he can't push them out but the lesson we learned is unless you think it is total overkill he's just staying in because he wants to so lesson number three is the bottom strand on a two strand or three strand um, electric fence doesn't need to be and shouldn't be too close to the ground when that bottom strand is too close to the ground, you introduce too many possibilities for problems to the effectiveness of that fence. For starters, the grass will grow up so much quicker to it and you'll have to be weed whacking the grass more. It'll be harder to weed whack because the fence is so close to the ground and it's just an overall kind of pain. The other thing is as the pigs come through and root, they will lift that grass clumps up and over. And if that bottom fence is too close, they will flip the grass over on top of it, pinning it to the ground. And then when that gets wet, it really will short out a lot of the effectiveness of your shock. And if that happens in multiple locations, very quickly you can have little to no shock. And that happened many times, which allowed our boar to get out of his two strand electric fence. So raising that bottom strand to six to eight inches is definitely going to help alleviate some of the maintenance and regular checking you have to do on the fence. And now initially we were worried that by raising it too high, the piglets would be able to escape. And that was the big concern why I wanted to keep it low, was for the newborn piglets. But we learned something now with two litters. Those newborn piglets are not going to leave the mother. And whether they can or cannot get under that fence is irrelevant because I saw once that they had escaped to the other side of the fence for two feet. This is they don't want to get far from mom. And so that was something we never really had to worry about. And so now I start to raise the height of that bottom fence because I don't have to worry about the piglets getting out, but I do have to worry about the grass and the clumps of dirt shorting out that fence and allowing them all to get out. And lesson number four is kind of a, just a slight correction to something we had already learned. 
And that is you hear a lot of times that the, the pigs, they'll, they'll till your garden for you and till, till an area. And one thing we notice is they don't really till, they plow. And you can see from our field what I mean. They don't till, they don't mix up that soil. It's not very loose, it's still very compact because they're walking all over it. But what they do do is fold that dirt and fold that grass over, just like as your plow would run through and fold as it goes. They dig up and flip, which is really, really convenient because right now we have them plowing out an area and keeping the weeds down in an area that we're going to plant for the spring. Now, they don't till. The dirt is very compacted. It's not mixed up. The manure is sitting on top. So we will need to come in and till it if you want it till. Now, I know a lot of people are into no-till right now, and so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so that one might be semantics, but they really do a good job of plowing an area and preparing it for planting. And as an added benefit, of course, they're spreading manure as they go and spend their lives in that area. So those were four small but very important lessons we learned in the first year and a half of raising American guinea hogs. One, mama doesn't need help. Two, a boar is really, really hard to contain. Three, that bottom electric strand does not need to be low, and in fact, it's better to be higher. And four, they don't really till, but they do a great job of plowing an area to be prepared for planting. But these lessons were really important and effective at saving us some time and effort, dealing with the pigs so that we can focus on other aspects of the farm as we grow and expand. And we hope as we grow and expand, you guys will come on this journey with us. Feel free to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and if you got anything out of this, leave us a comment, or if you have some other things that you guys have learned, share it with others in the comments below. And God bless you guys, and we thank you for watching our videos, and look forward to seeing you next time.